Welcome to another episode of Inside the Barrel, um, where essentially John and I normally take you through behind the scenes of developing at a consulting firm um, on the ServiceNow platform. Today, um, we have another special guest, the same guest as last time because she loved <laughs> us so much, uh, Ashley. Um, you can give another little intro about yourself, Ashley. And then um, today we're going to talk about building components. Um, so we're building off of our last episode where we kind of got the developer set up. Um, so John's going to walk us through you know, how we could build a simple uh, React component, and then hopefully we'll get it deployed. If not, we'll just preview it locally um, for, for everyone to kind of get started. Sounds good. Um, I'm Ashley Snyder. I'm a uh, senior developer at Virginia Tech. Um, you guys may know me or heard of me from the SN Dev Slack or, or my blog, um, AshleySN.com, where I kind of just explore different things and interesting things in the ServiceNow platform. Awesome. And you know, John, um, so let's, let's just jump right into it, John. Like, let's <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> let's see what we can do. So maybe we'll start with like a, a screen share of, um, visual studio code. Like, should we just jump right into visual studio code? Yeah. I think uh, we set up a project last time. I forgot how far we got. I know we discussed a couple different things. So I think the, my PDI <laughs> cleaned out since the last time we met it reclaimed itself so i have a brand new instance um i am connected to it through um like i i was able to get connected to it through the snc or the cli yeah. um so we are connected that way so we'll create a new project then real quick and we'll kind of take a little step back from that one but it so if you want to screen share yeah uh, So here's Visual Studio. Cool. And so let's, um, do you want to open terminal up here? Like, do you, do you normally run it? You could run it through Visual Studio. Uh, yeah, I've always which... created the project in terminal first and then pulled up that index file in Visual Studio or an editor. I think you That's could easy enough. Let... The... Okay, yeah, go, go for that. <laughs> Switch over to the terminal. Uh, sure, real, real quick for that. Yeah. All right. Okay, I'm ready. Awesome. Uh, so can you just uh, LS wherever we're at? Just want to make sure. Is this okay? Uh, do you want to CD somewhere else? But not Discord backups. <laughs> Uh, doesn't like that, huh? And then let's make a directory because you probably have a bunch of stuff. Sure, ITB, perfect. Yeah, I think you have to be in an, an empty directory or the yeah. when you try to create that project, it's gonna give you an error. Yep, and then CD into it. Awesome. And then just type clear so we can get rid of all the other stuff above. Awesome. Okay. So now I think it the command and you know someone correct me if I'm wrong. SNC uh, uh, UI dash component. <laughs> uh, and then yeah, did you get the um oh it's the not extension CLI. set up? Or I don't know if it's still set up from last time. Yeah, do uh, SNC dash dash help. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if it's single or. Okay. Oh, let's see what you got. Yeah, we got it. Cool. Okay. Cool. So then we can do SNC space uh, UI dash component, and then we could do dash dash help just so we can see what those are. It's probably gonna yell at us because it needs. It doesn't like help or it doesn't have help. Maybe it's. <laughs> I just don't remember it off the top of my head. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, oh, so there's, it's project. Yeah. And I think we need to pass a few things for that. Um, yeah, we have to pass the name, the script, and you can pass a description if you want, but definitely the name. 
Um, so like hyphen hyphen name. And then since, are you, well, did we connect to the instance? Remember that last time when we weren't connected? We had yeah, to- Yeah, we're, we're connected right now. Well, at least I was just a minute ago. Okay. So I think you'd like put in like the name of your scope, like your application scope that you want this to be like at, you know, my org or at whatever. Oh, you can't do global, John. <laughs> so do like an at sign and then name it like ITB. Yeah. And then slash. And then we're going to name this. So the project we'll work on is we're just going to try to build a, a simple report. Um, so we'll just name it simple report. Hopefully it likes camel case. Probably doesn't, but that's okay. And then I think that's that's all you need. Um, yeah, I think so. I don't think it needs the description. It's just like a nice to have. Yeah, so press. What did it yell about us? Oh yeah, you got a. Well, now you have that. Uh, oh, instead of the underscore, underscore, I think you need a hyphen. Yeah. I was close. <laughs> <laughs> it's picky. Ugh, what now? Cannot find an active. Oh, come on. I was just. Right. So I think you need to do that. What is it? Um, so you configured uh, profile stream. Yeah, I think it's just the configure profile. Or there's a login method. I don't know. I don't actually remember what's the what's the way you connect to it because i think you've already said it right so this is just going to reset yeah it. i did set it um, um let's see how do we, how do we see our profiles oh you can view it okay just do configure after it um, oh so you mean S profile configure snc configure and then view space view hopefully it doesn't print out okay maybe take away view I'm just looking at like it says you can view it. So press enter. Profile set view or remove connection profiles. Okay. But we yeah. S and C configure profile list. Hey, what do you know? Okay. It's there. And so it should have when executing that project one, it should have been able to connect to that one. Is your, yeah. your, your dev instance is up, right, John? Like it's- uh, Let me make sure. Uh, uh, maybe it logged me out. Nope, I'm still active and logged okay. into it. So let's try running that project command again and we'll just do dash dash offline for now. Uh, let's see, what was it? <laughs> and then dash dash offline. That way we can just figure that out later. Scope main, oh, okay, that's fine. So go back up and then add a dash dash scope. And then just name the, same, the scope the same as the, the name. The at sign, starting at the at sign? Um, I don't think you need to do that part. Oh, you did. Hmm. Okay. Do, do we? Uh, I don't care. <laughs> great. Oh my gosh. You're doing great. You're doing great. There we go. And then oh. it starts with X. <laughs> oh. You get yeah, yeah. Uh, he, yeah, that's probably fine. All right, yay. Okay, so now open this folder in Visual Studio Code. And so I think we can, I think that's. All right, let me switch over. I don't, just to let you know, I always run NPM install after creating a project too to get Ooh. any dependencies. Smart. So sometimes when I don't, I get all these weird errors when I try to run it locally or deploy it and I have to go back and run it. So what is it? 
uh, NPM, NPM install. Or NPM I, if you want to be late. Just to install? Yeah. We can probably do stuff while it's running in the in VS Code. I don't yeah, think let me that. switch. Let me switch over. All right, so now we're into that folder there. So I know we have to kind of dig in here. I think it's underneath the um, SRC folder. And then underneath simple report. I know there's like a, there's like a ton of index JSs in here. Um, I think it's that index JS in the simple report directory. Yeah. Perfect. All right. And it finished running or no, not yet. Okay. <laughs> it's still going. <laughs> All right, what do we want to do here? Yeah, so we got our, our basic template here. Um, you just want to do, I mean, so we're wanting to create a report in here or? Uh, yeah, we can create a report in here, sure. Okay. Uh, I mean, just to make it, just to put something in there for now, we can go ahead and throw like a, a header, like for that report name, or I don't know if we want to grab that report name. I think it really depends on if we want that to change or not. So you mean here? Yeah, yeah, you can like hard code something in there if you want, which can be changed. <laughs> Yes, it is. What are we doing? Incidents? That sounds good. Perfect. And uh, to view that, like, um, how would you view this uh, as you're going as you're going along building things? Um, because I in the portal world, I'm very used to like making a change, saving, and then you know refreshing my portal page to view it after you know I'm doing stuff. Uh, is there a similar uh, yeah. mechanism here? Yeah, so you should be able to go back to terminal and type in snc space ui dash component and then the word develop and then okay. dash dash open. One moment, it's still running through all the. Okay. All the other stuff. Okay, well, we'll continue, and then once that's done, then I'll. Do we want to check out your now CLI JSON file? I think we'll need to check that one. Oh uh, yeah. And so I think we can add the development things here. So that would essentially, um, uh, like you can add, and I can give you the code. But like you can do like the origin and then the port in that proxy. Um, and that so here, should, yeah, so it should be an origin, which is your instance name. And then, oh, that, well, that's for proxy. I'm, I'm just like looking through the docs, trying to, to see, yeah, we don't need to do a proxy. That's if you needed a proxy and yeah, we're, we're good there. But I think I was trying to get our setup so that when we do deploy, it would work. And I, is uh, it, maybe it's the now UI JSON. Yeah in order to give it like a name so it doesn't say my component. <laughs> now you want to add a description. I see. See how it is, John. <laughs> yeah. Is there any other right. setup you think we need to do? 
or I think that was, I think that was um, it. Yeah, I mean, you can give it a description if you want. I tried Icon before and it didn't take for whatever reason. Um, I don't know, really just the labels, most important part. So it shouldn't be like, hello world here, because <laughs> then it'll show up. Yeah, yeah, like, I don't know if you guys played around with this, like in agent workspace, but I know I did, and I had like three little things that said my component. That's why it's like really, <laughs> really important to do this because you, you don't want to be building components and have like 20 of them named my component. <laughs> Which one is it? Well, it's it's my component, that one. <laughs> <laughs> sure. All right. Dorian, what was that command for? Oh, uh, SNC space UI dash component. So I think what's like nice is, I don't know, so you don't have to switch screen shares all the time. Like you should be able to open up terminal here, um, which I've done in the past. In so VS like, code? Yeah, in VS code. Maybe it's that play button. I can't remember if it's the play button. Nope, not the play button. Um, up top in like, I'm trying to open my VS code to tell you. Let's see. <laughs> uh, it's under up top where it is uh, terminal like on the, the menu oh, of terminal. it, there should yeah. be a new terminal button. And that kind of shows it um, there for you. Ah, but will that open a... Uh... Well, so first LS, <laughs> like, let's see where, where you're at. Uh, okay, cool. So now try just running SNC to see the dash dash version to see if that, that command's in here. No, it doesn't. Oh, oh it, it didn't know, uh, SNC dash version, or maybe it's just SNC version. Cool. So yeah, so you can just run your SNC commands here. So UI dash component space develop, and then you can do dash dash open if you want it to also open a browser. Mm -hmm. And we'll see if don't mind any unhandled promise rejects. Service now needs to fix those. <clears throat> proxy server doesn't start that's totally fine and yeah so you're already using port 8081 for something so uh, just go back to that command and then we're going to pass in a port dash dash port and do like 4000 probably have a better port but that's okay See, we got good at this because of the last time I remember that error. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Uh, all right, building module. All right, so it does open it, but it's in a, it's you know, it's in its own browser. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there... so you're gonna have to switch that screen share to to do that. So maybe share your desktop or move it to yeah. a desktop. No, I'll do that. Um... So what'll happen though, just FYI, I can make things quite wide. Um, and uh, it will, you know, it'll be a wide screen share. So prepare yourself for that. Uh, hopefully. All right, let's see, let's do this. Let's see if, let's see if I can with get my it. magic little tool here. Let's see, we don't need that one. We want this one. There we go. Nice. So there you go. We have built a component, John. We could collect millions of dollars and go home. And we're done. We're done. <laughs> it says right there, we did it. See, we changed it. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I feel like there should be a way to connect. Like, I guess, I guess like if I'm a developer and I want to build things locally and still pull data from my instance, like there should be a way to, to pull it down. So you don't have to deploy it first. Right. Or like, how you mean do you if, if, if we make a data connection to this instance, how can we use the data from that instance while we're developing without having to deploy it first? Right. That's what you're asking. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't know if that's possible, but I would hope that service now would implement something like that. Right. So like, cause if we're setting our profile to connect to it, Right, like we have the uh, the correct authorization. Um, I just don't know if there's APIs that, you know, allow us to do that. 
Well, so so this is the question. Within these components, are we supposed to use like the APIs, like table API and that stuff versus um yeah, I guess the... they're not. Yeah, I think I think you're supposed to. Because that would be, I, I would assume that would allow you to be local, offline, do run through everything, get get data, um, manipulate. You know, even if if this wasn't even just a simple report like a read only, if we were actually uh, receiving and, and submitting data back and forth, we should be able to do it without deploying if we're using the APIs. Because that's that that's irregardless of being deployed. Yeah, right. the, the API should work either way. As long as you're authenticated, then you should be okay. Uh, I agree in theory. <laughs> uh, I'm like searching <laughs> Google right now, right? Um... Well, so an easy test would be to add um, just to, you know, get all the open incidents. Right. So is that just a simple table API call? Well, so but how do you set up how do you set yeah. up the the what's authentication? What's what's tricky yeah. here is like, well, so you're already off the right from your profile. Like when you deploy this thing, you, you would already be off. But like when you look at components in like the UI builder, they have a whole different section where it's like, you know, connect to a data source, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. so like, I don't know if it lives in the component or maybe it's just parameters you you define in your component and then it's like expecting them. Um, That's what I'm thinking it is. I don't think you would like hard code that API call into your component because then the, that, com that particular component wouldn't be very reusable. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you could or not. I haven't seen it, but I'm like, that's what I'm thinking. Seeing if we could if they like have information on this. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Like looking at their guides or trying to find. Oh, to John. Oh, nice. Uh, okay. Oh, that's cool. All right. Uh, we got some oven stuff for you, John. Oh, sweet. I love oven stuff. <laughs> no. Uh, so if you want to open that up, um, we can kind of walk through that together. Oh. That in. Uh, Hot corner strike again. All right. Here we go. So. So, this, so Ashley found a um oh, it needs a dependency hmm. yeah that, that's cool that's that's awesome um but actually found it, i think this was from a knowledge uh last yeah. year knowledge of um working with components and making http calls it looks like um, yeah so, so it looks like we can use this create http effect now i don't know you know if we do all this right now we don't have a way to display the data so I don't know what we're gonna get, but it looks like that's what we use to get it from those APIs. So, yeah, so it looks like, here, and I'll send this to you, Ashley, as well, that I'm also looking at. So just using that, I kind of like, there looks like there's a docs on the UI framework. Um, so let me send this to, to John as well. So maybe this, because it's probably a little bit more up to date. Um, yeah. So I, so I sent you this and it talks about all of the different components um, or all the different parts of a component. Um, Which there's a lot to go through in this document. Um, that there's an example though, like a yeah. checklist or, or maybe, a ta a, they have a task board um, well it looks like i mean this is kind of the basic idea right you're you're um and i know you know hard coding is one thing but as we're just kind of <laughs> having our first steps in building something 
I think that's what you end up doing anyways, is hard coding something um, yeah. just to see what you're going to get. But it looks like this right here is a simple example of, of that, right? Yeah, so the, the, the now 2021 totally is. I was just hoping that there was like a simpler one that like connects to some data and like there's just like a very easy to, way to connect to like ServiceNow data. And so yeah. I, think, I think the there's like a checklist one, John, so I'll send you the checklist one. It's, it's a little bit further down. Um, that like looks like a lot but they essentially build like a checklist. That's kind of how in the, the knowledge um, presentation too, like they do grab the data um, with the create HTTP effect. Yeah, so in that- But at yeah, first they go through all this of creating a table, like a presentational table to put it in. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I'm just worried like a lot's changed since Orlando. <laughs> yeah. So like- um, that part just worries me a little bit. Whereas like the, the one that I just sent to John that he's looking over, um, it looks like it uses HTTP effect, but it doesn't install any dependency. Okay. Um, well, shouldn't that come along with when you install it? Like you're going to, uh, you get a dependency for anything attached to the, uh, HTTP effect. Well, so I, I think in that guide, right, it, it has you install a component, right? Like the you, UI, yeah. UI effect HTTP. But looking at this example, I don't see where they tell you to install anything, right? I think they already assume you have it installed. Oh, interesting. Yeah, they probably do because they're telling you to like go to this, go to this readme and set it up this way. Oh my gosh. So I guess we need to run this command. Yeah, I'm just I'm just double checking to make sure that. Mm -hmm. So the run. I'm looking at their repo. So for the example checklist, that looks pretty normal. In the components. Package JSON and see the dependencies. Yeah, so let's install that at service now UI effect HTTP. So yeah, let's we could go through. I think the um, this knowledge twenty twenty one and see how far we get. Okay. So just kind of reviewing that. It looks like they install and then import it. Um, yeah, yeah, you have to, so if you're like working in, from what I've seen like doing, it, if you're working in terminal, you have to install it. And then you have to like install the component or whatever you're using. And then you have to import it into the component that you're building. Gotcha. Yeah, and it looks like to create an HTTP effect, it looks like you just tell it what API to use, okay. the method, and then like what parameter. So it's like kind of like using that REST API Explorer um mm -hmm. would probably help people if they they needed to do that um and then maps all right yeah i mean i think this walking through this exercise is is probably really helpful because this would have been really hard for us to do <laughs> <laughs> yeah there goes, there goes my simple right like just let's do something simple but you know in the scheme of things this is exactly how it always works you think something's going to be easy and then you know you find out yeah so it looks not. like why does that gray out like that because uh, you're not using it anywhere oh okay all right and so, so Yeah, let's see if we can fetch some users <laughs> or fetch incidents, right? If we wanted to do fetch incidents instead. Oh, yeah, we could do that. Yeah, kind of to go back to what you were saying, John, while we're doing that. Um, that's kind of what I've seen just looking at all the now experience and component stuff is that 
a lot of the developer site stuff, um, even on now learning, what you're going to find is really simple examples where you're not connecting to any data in the system and you're not modifying any data in the system. It's just something you would put on UI builder to be interactive. Um, in my opinion, they're not very good use cases. <laughs> they're easy and they're fun, but they don't really <laughs> tell you, like they, they're not really good examples on how to interact with the system. Uh -huh. um, and as you dig further, you might see some, you know, creator con workshops. Hopefully we'll see more this year, but there's only a few things out there that really dig deeper. So right now you're kind of, it's very exploratory right now. If you want to dig deeper into these and, and actually interact with things, um, you know, on the server. Yeah. One thing that I, you know, as a developer, you, you see a lot of is, um, you work on thing or you go look for examples, you know, really it's, it's a cookbook. You want a cookbook, but then people get kind of overwhelmed with well, what am I looking for exactly? I know what I want, but I don't know how to type that into Google. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and so you end up with all these, uh, examples of your hello world stuff. And you're like, well, this doesn't really help me. I want to connect to a table and I want to get data. Where's yeah. my example of that? You know? And so it's really nice if people go beyond the hello world, cause that's a very simple, you know, we, we changed the title. Ooh, big deal. Everyone can do that. You know, there's a million hello world apps out sitting out there because yeah, <laughs> that's as far as everyone got because and they, cause they couldn't find what they really wanted, you know? Yeah. I, I remember when um, portal just came out and some of the, the lessons on the developer site were, was basically create a widget that said hello world. And that was like it. <laughs> yeah. Right. And, and you're like, yeah, this is great and all, but I, I really want to, um, I, I really want to know how to do the, the real stuff, the stuff I'm going to need, you know, hello world gets me nowhere. I want data. Yeah. Cool. So, I mean, let, yeah, let's just try pulling incident. Right. So I don't know if we need to open it. It doesn't matter. Right. Like, it, Oh, you're like adding a query to. Well, incident. Um, well, no, like that API, you would need to do like sysparm. Let's just, just add the sysparm limit 10. Oh, sysparm. I got you. Yeah. Cause, cause so essentially for people that are struggling on, you know, what's the right API to use, you would, you'd probably just want to go to rest API explorer, um, and kind of do your query there. Um, and, and I think you'd have to, we'd have to find out what the, um, yeah, what that sysparm is, but so maybe let's not do that right now, <laughs> John. Just so you don't want to. You, know, you don't want to add that. <laughs> yeah, just so that it just so that this works, right? Like we can we could kind of go back, um, and and so kind of moving along, like what's what else does the doc say we need to do? So sure, sure, we can do that. All right, so there's a comma there. Yeah, so it looks like you have a method and then you have, so like, I, I think they're like called mutations in React. And so don't quote me, but I think that's what this like su success action type is. Like you're defining like what does that, or their action handlers, man, dang, I was wrong. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think they're mut also called mutations, but um, action handlers in this case where what is like, when when you do something like what what action do you want it to call um and and so when we're when we're saying well we probably should name it incident fetch uh succeeded but oh yeah huh uh, So it looks like when your request, when you're calling this action handler of requested, it's going to go and call that API. And then when you're succeeded, when you succeed, it's going to like do something with that data, right? It's going to, you know, essentially process that payload. Mm -hmm. um, that's how I read those, those action handlers. Yeah, I agree. And so a lot of this is boilerplate code that John doesn't wants to get his hands dirty and type it up so and just that like incident that succeeded um 
you know, I'm not to get off too off topic on creating a component, but you will, if you go in the UI builder and, and you start using like data um, resources and stuff. So connecting data to out of the box components, you'll see like a section where they have action handler. It's called like data fetch succeeded or data fetch failed. And you can actually do something when that happens. So that's, I'm assuming that's, you know, what all this is too. Like if it, it succeeds, great, do this. If it fails, do that. Um, and just build that into your component as well. But to put like a visualization on it, you can go into UI Builder and kind of see what they did with their out-of-the-box stuff. Yeah, and I think that's, you know, like a great, I, I'm hoping that like if this works, <laughs> then like, especially because we're console logging it, we'll be able to see like a payload, right? So, mm -hmm. um, And so we, we're not going to worry about the delete part for now. Um, so if we, which is nice, a nice example because if you wanted to modify data and notice how it, it the API uses that colon ID um, on that first line for cons delete user. So that's essentially you, you can pass in something, which is good. Um, this this way we're not really passing in anything from the the, the component yet. What did I miss here? So unexpected token. Oh, man, you're gonna. That looks. Maybe there's more code we need before we can run it, but. Well, it doesn't like these colon or these yeah these colons here. Yeah. Um. Can I scroll up, John? On this? Yeah. Um, so, or I'm sorry, scroll down. Let's see what the next part. Maybe there. Well, this is for a. This is for a, a different no, no, thing. No, I was. I was hoping they would give us more. <laughs> like oh, that's all they give oh us. no, that's it. <laughs> I think they give us all this, and they're like, "Yeah, you, you should know." Just expect like, it to work. It'll work. Like sure. where to place all of that, right? So let me see what the other person did because they did something similar in the knowledge 2020. And like, you know, you would expect to see something in here about, oh, go to this, you know, make sure you're on this index.js file here to add all this stuff. So it looks like action handlers need to be inside the view or, or sorry, inside the custom, create custom element. What? Where's that? So if you scroll down, you see where that create custom element is. Uh, after the return, oh, wow. Yeah, this is like, it's, it's so funny. It's because like the knowledge 2020 has is on a different version of this. So I think you need to place the action handler uh, information and the uh, the other function inside the create custom element. So that leads to the... Oh, down here? I don't know if the dispatch goes in there, but so like if, if you opened up that article around the knowledge 2020, they say, this is what your JSON file should look like. And pretty much inside of that create custom element is where the action handlers go. Mm -hmm. so, so keep going down. Yes, yeah, so this is what you're, and obviously some of this isn't, <laughs> it is a little out of date, but the, um, my guess would be put the action handlers inside the. Uh, yeah, it doesn't show yeah. <clears throat> the, uh, the dispatch either. All right, so you're saying it goes inside. So after the comma view, I just press enter and then paste that. But does the does the other piece of it, this piece, go in there too? I think it it doesn't need to because it's just a function you're calling, right? Yeah. Um, and so I think that can be outside of it. Um, you're missing a comma after style or before styles, yeah. 
Um, we're building. <laughs> we're building something. We're building. <laughs> uh, <laughs> something will have. Whoa. Let's scooch that over. And see what console says. Fetch succeeded. Fetch succeeded. So I think um, we need to actually define fetch succeeded, succeeded before using it. So in the action handlers, oh, interesting. I wonder if, like, I'm like torn because I think some of this is out of date. <laughs> <laughs> so like um so why would it think it's not let's see so let's see if i can see if we can uh find other examples in this list Yeah. See, this is where people get, you know, as a developer trying to do this, I would get so frustrated on the lack of, you know, good information. All right, John, I sent you some, another example or another part. So I think the, you just need to like define it up top. So Here, like just this thing? Cons. Yeah. Like just a, a the cons for it. And that's, I, again, I think that's like a React thing, actually. Um, so part of my, should have got a React expert on here too. <laughs> I know, right? I, I would love to actually see like something with someone who knows quite a bit about React and like them looking at it and walking through this, you know, because we're all hitting it from, a service now developer standpoint, you know, some of us know more than others about this stuff, but that would be really interesting. Yeah. I'll, See, they maybe, don't even, they're, they're not even inside that. Unless they're assuming that like, you know, how would you know that you're supposed to be inside the create custom element? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Cause they're doing, they're running all that. Well, it looks like they actually don't have it. They just have it in an object, right? So yeah. So maybe you don't need it there and it just needed to be inside of an object. So like that. <laughs> Which I have no idea how that would be called, but that's okay. Uh... Right. Yeah, oh, but see, it doesn't. It, it doesn't like yeah. those again. Yeah, I just keep it in there for now. And we'll yell at service now to update their documentation. Yeah, well, see, I remember. I remember a while back, I I ran into a problem. Oh, requested. Psst. Oh, I wonder if dispatch has got to be. No, that should be all right. Do you think we need yeah. to do? Oh, check that out. Probably should make sure they match too. Yeah. Um, so I think it's in a sim. So I wonder. Yeah, that's that's funky. But I remember way back when it first like started. Whoops. Um. I I ran into some trouble with the the documentation, and I I reached out to one of the the people at. Oh man, I mean seriously. Uh service now. And they were like, I I don't know. <laughs> and it's like, well, you guys need to write, you know, obviously we've all had issues with documentation from service now. And maybe it's like they need to open it up for um community writing, you know, like Wikipedia. <laughs> give some high level um, MVPs access to the documentation and, and just let the community write stuff. 
that would be very cool for like, you know, like new stuff like this, like components, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I mean, you know, like they're not going to be maintaining the components we build. So that would be a pretty, right. pretty interesting thing. So we got to everywhere and then the dispatch event fails, but we're, like, can you comment out the dispatch event? Well, I, I was going to say the, the ones you sent me don't have that thing. So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Then the latest one. Hey, oh look at that. Oh my gosh. It's compiling. But I don't have, <laughs> like, I didn't get any results, I guess. Yeah. Because I don't think it was actually called, right? Um, oh, well, then how do you get that running? So, because, so user fetched. So essentially, we need to, oh, to call I that see. user fetched. Cause, cause that's a function, right? And mm -hmm. so the user fetched is the action handler. So somehow we need to call that uh, incident fetch requested, right? Like that, that needs to be called somehow. And that's like a, that's what I thought the dispatch event would do. Um, yeah. But there may be like an other, another way to do it. Um, But see, this one uses that. But is this one older? I think that's the thing about <laughs> using these docs and trying to go through the examples. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you've really got to go through those oh, things. Rather, rather, uh, rather than dispatch event, can you just do dispatch? And well, so this one has dispatch after. Yeah, I don't know. Would you say just dispatch? Just dispatch. Yeah. I think I think dispatch event is a React thing, and dispatch is a custom service now thing. Oh, see, and that's the other problem you run into is if you've got dispatch, you know, right. service throw, nows. Oh no! No, throw dispatch inside the create custom element. <laughs> like maybe, maybe it needs to belong there too. Uh, I don't know how that's going to work. See, dispatch is inside. Okay, so. Nice. Feeling good. We're, we're getting Where close. that go? And then just put a comma. Oh. oh, like it's saying it's inside of requested. Oh, so. But. I don't know how that action, like it's saying, put it inside the function of fetch incidents. So after essentially you call it, cause that's what this looks like it's doing. No, or yeah. Um, I would just put like a comma and then like a dispatch. It's probably something in like the state or something like that, but maybe just- Well, it's gotta be within, Inside the action handler. Yeah, I guess I just don't know how the action handlers are being called, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. That's well, so weird. Well, you defined it at a, as a const above. Uh, don't put a, uh, put it. So is that outside the action handler? No. So what happens when you put it outside the action handler? And well, so put a comma instead of a semicolon. Like I know that shouldn't work, but no, it won't. It doesn't okay. like that. Okay, so put it. Well, inside. let's try. Let's try it this way. Maybe. No, still doesn't like it. Maybe put it inside the action handler somewhere and. Um. And. Interesting. Well, what? Psst, come on now. So now it doesn't like that at all. Yeah, I'm looking for. Um, maybe put a semicolon on the end of that. No. 
I'm not even doing advanced stuff. <laughs> right? So, I mean, I'm just going to send you some more docs. So looking at their like other examples of like how they use action handlers, they essentially throw action handlers in some sort of function and then use behaviors. Um, but uh, like, I would assume it's like rendering. No, I don't think rendering. Acceptors. So maybe it's under interceptors. Okay, yeah, here we go. Interceptors. All right, interceptors are functions you can use to isolate cross-cutting concerns when executing effects to simplify effect functions. They wrap the effect in a before and after function that build up co-effects to uh, add effects to a pipeline. Um, so that looks similar to what we were doing, right, with these co-effects? Sure. I have no idea what that, that is. That, this is probably a React thing. <laughs> yeah. I, that whole like main concept section is like something I need to dig into, but probably anyone trying to go through this has to do that homework first. There's just so much, you know? Oh yeah. Seriously. Like, on a, I don't know, like John, you've been doing portal stuff for a while. Like <laughs> your impressions of this versus like a widget, you know, this is, I mean, okay. So coming from a non react at all background, and having to and and back when Portal started, I had to learn Angular. And honestly, comparatively, Angular was like a hundred percent easier to learn than yeah. this. Um, I feel like I would need like a month long boot camp <laughs> to understand what I'm doing here. <laughs> and this is a you know I I've been doing web development since the early two thousands, and I this is really. A struggle for me you know it's it's not something i'm very used to but maybe i'm i'm too stuck in in other ways of doing things i don't know but yeah this, yeah, is, this is pretty involved intense too i agree i know me personally i i need to put my head down and put the time into it like i've gone through some basic stuff and I've gone through getting the now cli set up but like you know i've been doing service now for five years and you know, in the past, I could just basically jump into anything on the platform, right? Like, right. And learn it, you know, get, you know, get there. But this is, this is definitely different. This needs a little bit more time before you jump in and get started to understand the concepts. Yeah. And I keep, I, I keep hoping, you know, someone like, or, you know, someone out there does all that hard stuff first and start and, and gives me some simplified, you know, how to's really some cookbook recipes and then because the way i you know my learning the best way for me to learn is to be able to take something and and tear it apart and and you know rebuild it and and make changes where i want things to happen um and to, to see how that affects things trying to start from scratch and having to read or go in and learn you know that's it's hard for me to 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 do it that way mm -hmm. um and so with without those nice examples <laughs> it's hard it's just hard for me to to do it you know the way this is happening as far as this is concerned and you make a great point you know everything outside of these react components you really could just jump in and do it ServiceNow itself the platform portal is fairly easy you know and you have a lot of examples of a lot of things to to go from you know even inside the platform you have script includes and other UI, you know, UI scripts and things like that. You can look at kind of reference and see what things are doing. Um, same with the portal. There's already widgets available mm -hmm. that you can use and, and modify fairly easy. But this is like, I mean, this is really involved to get stuff happening. So, so let me put this link. I know we're a little bit at time. So I just wanted to put that link. So I think um, I, I sent this to John. Uh, this looks like if you were following the uh, documentation where they have examples of 
like, you know, building the people counter or something like that, um, that Ashley's done in one of her blogs. I think this is the actual code that cool. like, if you, if you run it, uh, it, it runs this. So in like this example, like if we look at the customer 360 example, John, uh, let's see here. Yep. So this one is definitely using, um, the HTTP effect. And so notice how they structure their project, right? But so, yeah, so it's, it's definitely using, so go into the, let's go into the get HTTP effect first. Um, it should be a file that they have. Yeah. So that looks different than the one we did, which is uh, that's fine, but um, they just essentially created a function there. Um, and then they, I'm guessing they call that function somewhere. So we just need to find where they call that. Uh, so going back to that. So the action handlers we, we were doing, right? All of these things, it looks like they have some sort of example for it. All right, so what was it called in there, the function? It, it's called get HTTP effect. So then they're importing it so they can call that somewhere here. Yeah, right here. And what's interesting is they have action types dot component underscore bootstrapped. And so where so did I saw that in one of the guides you sent? I thought. So, so I'm thinking that like that could be like a how it's um, utilizing it. There's where did I see that? Oh, right there. So yeah. this, it, it looks like what you sent me. What they're doing here is closer to. So yeah, maybe that this was guide. Was um. This yeah. checklist one is Which what it looks like. It's closer the code for. So going yeah. back to that checklist snippet, I just my I think our last thing we could try is if we scroll down to the part where Wait, that is, is that. Which one was it? I think it was that. <laughs> I think it was that one that you were on. <laughs> this one. And scroll down. Oh, scroll up. Sorry. Where keep going up? There was. Oh, uh, wasn't that one? Where did I just? There we are. This okay, one. yeah. So copy under on the actions and dispatch. So copy that action types component bootstrap. Uh, you don't have to copy all that, just the action types. Yeah, that one. And throw that in the action handler. And then instead of dispatching the checklist load request, dispatch our fetch incidents and then delete that. Cool. All right. I'm feeling good. Gonna end on a high note. Cool. Oh, so close. Action, <laughs> Action types. types. Well, now I'm like, what? Where is? So now I'm like, all right. Let me look at their files. Where are they defining action types? Yeah. Uh, oh, so they. Oh, from UI core. So you're gonna want to import action types from here. I'll send you this piece of code, John. And that means you need to install the dependency so you're going to want to npm install that as well all right what, what is it uh npm install uh at oh, I don't see it. Uh, at service now slash ui dash core does it need that e at the end dash e no mm -hmm. And I copy paste okay. that. And okay. so that was what is it called? Um, you want to import action types, camel case, and then from at service now. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. UI cool. Cool. Maybe that's the sweet spot. <laughs> I have no idea. So it looks like at least on that guy that you're on, it explains action and dispatch, which I guess yeah. is nice. Um, so whichever one that one is on is probably a good one for people to, to look at. The, uh, that was the checklist. The thing. checklist one. 
Yeah, I agree. So the creator con ones, like you say, it's kind of outdated as we've seen. There's probably some good stuff in there, but it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot all up front. Yeah, because I'm guessing that that action types is like the life cycles of uh, React. So like when I'm assuming component bootstrapped is like when it's loaded, right? Do these actions. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully that was the, the missing piece in John Wool. Well, now I'm just getting, maybe I have it incorrect. Whoops. Um, hey, I mean, we made a call. I just got to say. We did. <laughs> we we <laughs> totally <got> did. <laughs> Awesome. It, I don't know why um, it did a post, but gateway timeout. Yeah. My my guess is because we never got it connected like to your instance, but um like I'm gonna call that success. <laughs> so, I agree. Well, it sure feels that way, definitely. You know, <laughs> getting yeah. at least to this point where you're not getting errors on on your code, this is something else. Um yeah, so it's, it's definitely so it's a win. So it looks like error occurred when trying to proxy the request from localhost 4000 to 3000. So I think that's something with our setup of, you know, build starting it locally. Um, like, I don't know why it's trying to proxy that, but yeah, um, maybe we stop there and we can, we could go forward. Like, I don't want to, unless you guys want to run a, a few more minutes, like I'm happy to try to debug that. Um, um, we, we, I know I got to get going, but that's cool. If you guys want to keep going. No, we'll, uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll transition if John wants to stop stream sharing and. Oh yeah, for sure. Cool. All right. So today we tried to do all the hard parts for you. <laughs> Um, essentially, all we tried to do was take a component and make a call to ServiceNow, or at least get you set up so that the call would we'd assume would work. Um, so I think at the end, if you pretty much watch the last few minutes, you'll have some you know boilerplate code. I think we showed you a bunch of different websites to to use in order to kind of help you through that journey. Um, hopefully, more documentation will be out there. We'll do another video when we figure it out ourselves. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I, I do want to say, Ashley, I really appreciate. You know, oh, yeah. Um, hopefully it was fun for you, too. Yeah, no, it was. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, if you liked all this content, subscribe or at least watch it. <laughs> so, yeah. you, know, you know, thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.